All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel, continuing the coverage of College Football 25. I have made videos breaking down coaching staffs and how all those features work, along with recruiting and the transfer portal. That got its own video. Today, we're going to break down everything else. We've got features such as player progression, custom conferences, managing wear and tear, and it looks like a lot more. This I plan to have is the final video here in this trio. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage, and if you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There's been so much to talk about with College Football 25, haven't gotten a college game in over a decade, and I'm enjoying going through all the information they give us. I will attempt to be more succinct in this video. So we've been talking about the offseason, which of course covers recruiting, signing day, and the portal. We're continuing in the next step of the offseason, which is position changes. And that's pretty self-explanatory. You can move a guy to a new position. You can decide what your athletes are going to be playing. If you forget to set it, they'll be automatically assigned their primary archetype's position. They're also going to show you a position change spreadsheet that shows you their projected overall and a new archetype. So when they have a new position, they will get a new set of physical abilities specific to that archetype. And along the lines of this, I'm really hoping they still allow you to play players at any position when you're in an actual game. I love that feature. And there are so many times I've been limited in Madden, for instance, because I've wanted to like put a receiver at running back or do something creative that it wasn't allowing. Now, player progression was a huge concern of mine because it was not really done well in NCAA 14. And the more I think about it, you know, that Dynasty mode wasn't great. The bones of Dynasty recruiting and building up a program is what's great, but the recruiting in that game was weak and the player progression was terrible. It was linear. Basically, everybody went up plus four or plus six overall. What do we got in this game? In Dynasty, players will automatically progress their attributes and physical abilities. Mental abilities cannot be upgraded, allowing for greater differentiation between players. Players will progress during the season based on on-field performance, but the bulk of their progression happens in the off-season. This progression happens after position changes so that players will progress in their new position. That's a good touch. So if you move like a safety to linebacker, they can get linebacker development in that one offseason. The amount a player progresses in the offseason is influenced by school year, coach abilities, and dev trait. And that's a whole new dynamic here to playing college football 25. To simulate the real world difference in physical maturity between a freshman and senior, younger players like rising sophomores will take larger leaps during the offseason than a rising senior. Similarly, a coaching staff will have a significant impact on development. Motivators can have the pay it forward ability, which awards bonus XP to a position group every time a player at that position is drafted in the first three rounds. Motivators can also have the put in work ability, which increases off season development in a position group. Here are the dev traits, normal, impact, star, and elite. So get ready to differentiate how Star is the second level in Madden, but the third in college football. Once a player is on your roster, their dev trait can be seen in the player card. When a player is a recruit, their development is hidden until National Signing Day. Unless you have the Strategist Archetype's Mind Reader, which gives you a chance to learn the development trait. Skill Groups. As opposed to progressing each attribute individually... For example, trucking, players will instead progress an entire skill group. So it's going to have a bunch of related attributes. For example, the running back power skill includes trucking, strength, stiff arm, toughness, jumping, and injury. Each group has a max level of 10. Each time you upgrade a skill group, it increases one level and progresses all of the attributes in the group. With that being said, some players will have a skill group max level or cap that is less than 10. So that's going to keep players from just becoming to be able to max out in any area. So here we've got 
Quinshawn Judkins, and the route running is going to be capped with a ceiling of seven. Power has a ceiling of nine. Skill group caps can be thought of a player's max potential in that area, and that's something we really haven't seen a lot of in football games. And I think it's the kind of thing that's needed to be explored to kind of take that next step in development. Once a skill group hits the cap, it can't be upgraded unless the coach has the architect archetype and the limit lists or put a ring on it abilities. And again, those coach abilities that I've talked about primarily in the first video are going to be pretty key. Limitless provides a chance to increase a random skill cap each time a player levels up. So in earlier videos, we touched more on abilities. That's definitely a big part of this game, and they seem to function a lot better than I'd say the Madden abilities do. Really capturing and differentiating players instead of giving them unrealistic superpowers. So, in progressing, players will look to upgrade their physical abilities if they meet the rating requirement. Every tier of a physical ability has an associated attribute requirement. For example, to have the Platinum Workhorse, a player must have 95 toughness. Dynasty players cannot upgrade their mental abilities. So, if a player does not come in as a freshman with a particular mental ability, there's no way to earn it through progression. So that's going to be pretty critical then, bringing in players right away, knowing that this is an area of their game that's really not going to be changing. I think maybe I misinterpreted some of this earlier when I was thinking about mental abilities. I was thinking of skills like awareness and play recognition, but this is more along the lines of what they were talking about. And by the way, these mental abilities, Headstrong, resists hot routes from being incorrect due to a stadium pulse. And the fan favorite here at Silver Tier, increased composure gains at home. So the headstrong one, that one potentially has a, a lot of value. Impact players are back, and you can identify them with the stars under those players. But there's no limit on the number of impact players a team can have in this game. Explosive offenses might have five or six. I think taking off the limitation there was absolutely a, the right call, and it really shows you, you know, this is Georgia. This is what you're up against. So if you're a small school with no stars and you're seeing this, you know it's going to be a long day. And then I've been really excited about the wear and tear system coming, and I have covered that in the gameplay deep dive. To summarize, players will incur damage to body parts, the more damaged a body part is, the more it impacts their on-field performance. And this is going to be something that carries over week to week throughout the season. Players will also incur wear and tear during Super Sim. Let's go. They confirm Super Sim is in the game. Now show me that slow Super Sim is in the game because that's important for what I do on the second channel. Each week, players will recover some of their wear and tear damage. The amount is dependent on how damaged the body part is. For example, say in the previous game, your running back severely damaged his right ankle and his left shoulder was only slightly damaged. The next week, you can expect his shoulder to be recovered, but the ankle to only be slightly recovered. You could decide to sit him to allow him to get back to full health the next week or play him with the increased risk of him having more time to recover. In an effort to ensure players are not disappearing in big games late in the season, we have set minimums that players will always recover to when advancing the week. And that seems to be something that they've kind of corrected from Madden, where the progressive fatigue has led to a lot of players simply not playing later in the year. And it's completely broken that feature for me. You can monitor wear and tear viewing the health tab on the player card. And what I love is it shows you just, this is what I've been asking for, man. Like, there's more than just being injured and missing games. Like, everybody's banged up. This is football. So here, left shoulder has a slight impact. And that's going to lead to minus three break tackle, minus three catching, minus two carrying. And that's with a slight health situation there's two more levels it can go and i think already getting like minus threes and minus fours in some areas is enough to maybe consider sitting a guy you know minus four break tackle in this one because the shoulder and the leg are both hurt here for donovan edwards that's minus seven break tackle 
for one game with minus three speed. I also think they're affecting the proper ratings. You know, having speed go down. I'd also like to see things like acceleration, but I'm not going to get picky. They're doing this well, it looks like. And then the left foot has minus four change of direction, minus three speed. Yeah, I would be sitting Donovan Edwards here. He has three things hurting break tackle, minus six overall speed. Give him a week off. But what if your next game's Ohio State? You know, that's when these decisions become really intriguing to me. And this is one of my favorite things with this game. The new 12-team college football playoff format is in the game. Very excited to see this in action and to have a playoff instead of the bowl system or relying on a mod to make some changes. While the media and coach polls run throughout the year, you'll need to wait until the calendar to turn to November before you start getting the peek at the bracket and what that is projected to look like. So here we've got the top 25 rankings, but this is for the college football playoff. So you'd be seeing the top 12 make it in. So they've developed logic and trying to create their own college football playoff poll. Factors like school and conference prestige can impact where you're going to end up in the poll. Here we've got a screenshot seeing the invite to go play in the college football playoff for seed Texas 11 seed Ohio State. Once the rankings are set, it's time to seed the bracket. The 12 team format is a 5 plus 7 model, meaning the 5 highest will get automatic berths into the playoff, and the remaining 7 spots are filled based on order of the final CFP ranking. The only way to get a first round bye is to be one of the highest 4 ranked conference champions. So an undefeated Notre Dame or independent, as well as the winner of the Pac-12, can be seated no higher than 5. Never eligible to skip past the first round. Really excited to have this in the game. I think that... I, I'm just so excited, man, about so much of this stuff. One of the most exciting parts about the new format is that the first round games are played on campus. So that's going to have home field for the home team, obviously. The playoff quarterfinal and semifinal take place at the Bulls, formerly known as the New Year's Six. They rotate annually each year of a dynasty, just like in real life. The national championship game has its own host, starting with the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. The championship game rotates through an additional 10 locations before looping back around. There is also 34 bowl games each year with real-world tie-ins. So it's already set up for those bowls to have, like, the conference tie-ins. And then you've got the bowl projections and a nice graphic here on the right side. These projections show up in the first week of November each season. All right, conference realignment is also a big deal and conferences or custom conferences have returned. This is nearly the same menu we had in NCAA 14. Every conference is set with their 2024 alignment. The Sun Belt is the last conference to feature divisions, and the scheduling logic has been set for both the current season as well as the future year rotation based on each year's rule set. The SEC will follow an eight game with one protected opponent rotation. Big Ten will utilize their nine game flex protect model. Here's a look at the conference standing screen. These conferences are getting so massive. But you can also edit everything to be what you want. If you prefer things the way they were or you want even more super conferences, then you've got the freedom to do that. You can have conferences have as few as four members while as large as 20. You can also have schools go independent. And then you can edit conference rules as well. If they're going to have divisions, what they're named, how many games they're all going to play in conference, if there's a championship game, where it is, and how everything is selected for that. Moving conferences does not mean you're stuck with the old conferences jersey patch. Wow, that's a cool touch. So that patch is going to update depending on where that school is. Great piece of detail there. We got James Madison here in the ACC. 
In an online dynasty, only the commissioner can make conference changes. Then we get into scheduling. It's not enough to make sure the schedules rotate. If it's the third Saturday in October, Tennessee better be playing Alabama. If it's Thanksgiving weekend, then it's the Iron Bowl. Big game, Florida State, Florida, and other rivalry games. Dynasty Mode scheduling system makes sure those special games are filled in the correct weeks before adding in the rest of the schedule. That's another very good touch, and I wasn't even aware. I'm not a huge college football fan, but uh, those games on specific weeks, I think that's uh, awesome to have that here in the game. For non-conference games, we have included as many real-world games as were announced by the time we had to lock schedules. So when you get to 2027 and 2028, the Florida State-Georgia home-and-home series is already scheduled. In 29 and 2030, Notre Dame-Alabama home-and-homes are scheduled. Our generator will be used to fill out everyone's schedule to make sure every school has 12 games for all 30 years of a dynasty. Kickoff games like the Duke's Mayo Classic and the Vegas Classic are here and are scheduled in future years of Dynasty. Another recent addition to college football is the concept of Week Zero. While the season kicks off on Labor Day weekend for a majority of schools, some get things started the week prior in what's Week Zero. The authentic games are scheduled for Year One and in future years, Week Zero will get utilized. Each week, the broadcast type will be determined based on what is the biggest game on that week's slate. If your game is either a national or streaming broadcast, it will be called by our team of Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock. The game of the week is called by Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet. The crowd themes that were talked about in the previous video also appear here. If your school does a whiteout, blackout, checkerboard, striping, you'll see crowd themes in the first home game of the season for rivalry games and if you're named as game of the week. So as we could in the past, you can customize your schedule during that preseason. Here's what that screen's gonna look like in this game with a list of the teams that are available. And then you can choose if you want games to be home or away. To avoid the mass confusion of multiple people editing schedules at the same time, the commissioner in an online dynasty is responsible for all custom schedule changes. Team Builder is back. You can import up to 16 teams in a private online dynasty. The commissioner will need to replace existing schools with the Team Builder teams. You can only do this at the creation of a league, so make sure you know what you want to use when you're getting started. Oh yeah, we got to talk about red shirting now. So that's had an overhaul. Because red shirts are now able to play up to four games in a season, but still be eligible to take a red shirt. So you can choose in the preseason who you want to red shirt and then monitor how many games they've played throughout the season. And then determine if you want to burn the shirt or keep it on and only play those four games. They can be played at any point in the season. So if that's going to be like for an injury replacement or to try somebody out at the end of the year, you're still going to have that additional year of eligibility. Once a player has played in their fifth game, they're no longer eligible, but will be eligible the following year. So that's something else to keep in mind. If micromanaging is not your thing, no worries. Anyone who is eligible will have it automatically applied. I don't think there's really any need in uh, not red shirting players then. I mean, if you have a guy who's going to be like a star right away, maybe don't waste your time. But I think that it would make the most sense to just redshirt everybody that could be. Then we get into the awards and the rivalry trophies and conference titles as well. We've got things like the Heisman Watch, the top five players that are eligible there. And then the Heisman Trophy winner, ultimately, and Dylan Gabriel's numbers. They've got all the other awards that have been in past games, and they also have the preseason and postseason All-American teams listed here. You'll be able to follow the nominees and finalists from the CFB tab of the Dynasty Hub. All-American teams are announced in the preseason as well as the first week of bowl season. 
No career mode would be complete without the tracking of player stats and the record book. So we've got season stats, career stats, coach stats as well. And then the record book from the career season and game level. Every stat category and every record is tracked at the national conference and team level. I would have loved to have this for doing the Kalispell Dynasty and to keep track of all the records throughout that series and the long 10 plus year run. Now it looks like you'd have the ability to keep track of that very easily. Play for Pride stickers. So it looks like you're going to be able to see the growth of that then over the course from game to game. We worked with each school to understand their fill pattern to make sure stickers are being applied in the correct pattern as they would apply them in real life. They're not just going to be on there randomly. So another very nice detail. Online and offline Dynasty are able to go up to 30 seasons. 32 users can participate, offline or online. Only one user per school. Commissioner sets the settings, the roster file that's used at league creation, all the custom conferences, schedule, and advancing the Dynasty in the weeks. You can keep track of everybody in the members screen. Commissioner status can be transferred as well. Commissioners can force a win in the event that a game was not able to be completed. Or for those of you that like to restart against the CPU. And this brings us to the end of the blog. I've enjoyed going through all this information and I'm just getting more and more excited for the game. I would have liked a little more depth when it went into player progression. I kind of wanted to see what that would actually look like in practice. I'd like a better idea of how much a player can develop and what the impact is going to be of taking a low rated player and having, say a Heisman contending season, a ton of production. How much better are they really going to get? Because the only reality I knew from NCAA 14 is not much mattering and players were getting plus four, plus six, and it was just pretty linear. You knew that if you got like an 80 overall freshman by his senior year, he'd be like a 96. There wasn't a lot of guesswork and it made that area of Dynasty extremely shallow. And because we're talking college football here and a very limited window of time to take a player from where they begin to their final days at the program, I want to see more about how players develop. And when the game comes out, it's going to be one of those first things I look at. Seeing how much better players are getting, if there are any sliders dedicated to player progression like there is in Madden. Because this is one area that I thought 14 did pretty poorly that I wanted to see significantly boosted. I am just fine with the like buckets here where you put points into elusiveness and it's upgrading all the things that have to do with it. In addition, I like the ceilings being capped for certain abilities. So we'll just have to see in a couple weeks when the game is available how all that plays. But as I've gone through this article, I've been very impressed with recruiting, the transfer portal, the college football playoff. I'm just excited to get my hands on this game. You know, it's just been a very unique experience waiting this long for a college football game and having it have more of a traditional gaming development cycle and not just build upon of what they did a year ago. Overall, I'd have to say that they've approached this game the way I hoped they would. And it doesn't seem that there's going to be any area of Dynasty that is worse than it was in NCAA 14. That was a huge thing for me. How much attention would the mode get? Thankfully, it seems to be the top focus. Rarely, especially in the last decade, have I felt like a game has really catered to that hardcore offline audience that wants to play the Dynasties and franchise modes. I'm very excited to get my hands on this one. And that's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed and have enjoyed my recent breakdowns. Check out the other ones on the channel if you haven't already for more information on coaching abilities and staffs, recruiting with the transfer portal as well. And when they drop more information, I'll be there. 
Road to Glory, hopefully we get some info on that. Team Builder, I'm expecting more to break down ahead of early release. So with that, everybody, thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback down below. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like, I'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more College Football 25 coverage, content, and dynasties. Have a great day, everybody.